Hello everyone, it's Ryan again at Dark Winter Moon in Boston, and today I wanted to talk to you a little about sigils some more. Um, I've been asked the question recently, so you've told us how to create sigils, uh, then what do you do after that? So today I'm going to go through next steps after you've created your sigil, and I'm also going to show off a couple of new sigils that I just created. Um, so first of all, so you've created your name sigil and maybe you've added something to it like protection or happiness. And um, so it's ready to go, it's done, you feel good about it. The next thing I recommend that you do is that you place it on your altar or in a place of power or if that's not really your thing, at least put it somewhere where you um, can see it often, somewhere where your eyes will meet it often. And so the reason why you want to put it in a place of power and or a place that you can see it often is uh, that place will, first of all, um, if it's an altar or a place of power, add its power to your sigil. It'll help continue to charge it. So to kind of backtrack a little bit, when you're creating the sigil, when you're thinking about your intent, you're, you're charging it then as well. But by putting it in a place of power, you're continuing to add to its power and continuing to charge it. So also another reason for putting it somewhere uh, significant to you where you will often see it is um, that every time your eyes meet it and you think about it and think about your intent for that sigil, you're adding more power to it. I also recommend that every time you think about it, even if you're not looking at it, that you also take a moment to focus on it and focus on your intent for it, and that too will add to its power. So the next step is to activate it. Um, the most common way to do that after you've charged it um, is to burn it. But how do you know when it's time to activate it or burn it? Um, you'll just know, like it's very intuitive. So what usually happens for me, for instance, is I'll think about the sigil or I'll look at it and I'll think, oh, it feels different now. It feels done. Um, so now it's time to, to uh, activate it or burn it. So um, it, it's really hard to convey what that feels like. For me, it's almost like a stop. Um, so let me go into that a little more. So when I am charging a sigil, when I see it or think about it, it feels like, for me at least, that there's this band of energy, this uh, cord of energy going from it to, uh, from my heart chakra to the sigil, and it feels like energy is passing from me and flowing through the sigil. Um, when that feeling feels like a stop where the energy may be connecting with the sigil, but it doesn't feel like it's flowing, then that's when I know it's right. So you'll know. You'll know when it's time. You'll know when to burn it. It may not be the exact sensation that I experience, but just trust yourself. You'll know when it's time. So um, let me go into that a little more in detail. So for me, um, I do a lot of artwork where I'm creating sigils that I am selling to or giving to other people. And those are actually works of art that maybe the person doesn't want to burn. So what's the alternative to burning a sigil if you don't feel like that um, it, it feels right to burn it or that you want to destroy a beautiful piece of art? Um, the other way to do it is just when you get that stop feeling, when you feel that it, it is done charging, that you uh, make a ceremony around that or at the very least acknowledge, okay, it's done, and that you release that energy into the world by concentrating on, okay, this sigil is done, I'm putting it out into the world that it's done. That's an option as well. So if you're not wanting to destroy um, a piece of art you've created, another option that you can do is actually uh, make a digital copy of your sigil. So let's say that you've written it out on a piece of paper. You can scan that into your computer and print it. Um, 
or you can, if you have a phone or other device that allows you to image a document, then you can image it and print it and then burn the copy. Um, the way the sigils work, every copy potentially has the same power as the original, especially if after you copy it, you focus on the same idea that you're wanting to convey. You focus on it in the same way that you did with the original sigil. Um, another option, in a, or, or one way that you could do that is you could um, draw out the sigil as soon as you're done, make a copy of it, or even like draw out another copy if you want, um, and have them both charging at the same time with the same intent right next to each other or on top of each other, and then take one and burn it so that you still have the original. Um, if burning isn't your thing, another option also is, um, you could tear it up and, um, do something like flush it down the toilet, throw it in the trash, um, put it into a stream of running water. They'll be mindful about your paper when you do that so that you're not polluting or littering. Um, you could bury it. There are several options, several other ways. So if fire just isn't your element or it's not really possible to burn it, then like I said, you could tear it up and throw it away, bury it, put it in running water. Um, as long as you destroy it mindfully with the idea of, of focusing on that intent that you're finishing this sigil and you're activating it to send its energy out into the world. So with all of that said, um, I have actually been thinking about offering uh, a digital download copy of all of my sigils that will go along with anyone that decides they want to uh, purchase the original artwork. So for I, I, I've created um, already created digital downloads of all my sigils that folks can just get that and have just the digital download um, that they can use in the same way as the original sigil. But if they're wanting to have the artwork, um, I think that I'm going to start offering um, the digital copy with the, 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 with the purchase of the original artwork. Um, so with that said, I'm going to show off um, some of my new pieces that I've been working on. So this first one is a sigil that I've actually had for quite a long time. Um, it is the sigil of protection, um, and I've put it on red paper. Uh, red's a very uh, powerful, protective um, color, and this is the back of it. And that one's already on my Etsy. There's also a digital copy. Um, and this is also a sigil that I have created for a long time, and I actually talked about how to make it in my last video. Um, and... Um, but here's the one that I'm actually offering for sale. And this is the uh, sigil of protection. It's the antivirus sigil. So um, this is good if you're vulnerable to the virus or you're scared about it. Um, if you're uh, worried about COVID-19, this is a good option. And there's the paper on the back, or the back of the paper rather. Um, so yeah, so stay tuned. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna start offering the digital download as um, um, as part of the purchase of the original artwork. That way folks can still continue to enjoy um, the original sigil and still uh, benefit from focusing on it and focusing on that intent, but also have an option that they can print out and burn to fully activate it and release its magic into the world. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm also linking the video to my last, uh, to, to making, to the making of the antivirus uh, sigil that I uh, did last week. Um, and as always, I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Um, I would love your likes and subscribes, uh, any comments or questions you have. Um, if you want to get in touch with me directly, probably the best is to go through Instagram at dark.winter.moon or to email me at darkwintermoon8, the number eight, at gmail.com. And also please check out my website at darkwintermoon.boston. Um, and as always, uh, like I said, I appreciate you tuning in and have a wonderful weekend and blessed be.